I'd actually never flown until earlier on this year and I got involved with it purely to see if it was doable. Um, I didn't know anybody that had flown a microlight, uh, let alone anybody that had flown a microlight with the use of one arm. And I didn't know if it was going to be feasible to, to do it. And so I thought I'd give it a go and at the very least I've, I've attempted something new. Um, and then through the expedition management team, I was invited to come along and, and spend a bit more time in microlight and see if it was feasible to learn to fly and, and get um, qualified. Uh, and I was, I was quite um, pleased to see that they were being quite frank with me and said that we don't actually think it's feasible for you to do this with one arm. Um, because we think it's we think it's beyond possible safely, uh, so that made me want to do it even more. And listened to the instructors uh, with two ears, fully tuned in to everything they said, and, and spent quite a bit of time reading around the academic material involved with, with learn to fly as well, uh, because I really wanted to, to test the boundaries really and, and do something that, as far as I'm aware, is new. Um, and that was the motivation. And I've, I've found through doing this a sense of freedom, a real sense of freedom. It's something that I think being airborne gives you. you know, it's, there's no congestion up there. There's no traffic, you know, there's, there's nothing like that. It's you in your airspace, um, pushing the vehicle, to be honest with you, seeing what it can do and seeing what you can do within it. And that's quite, it's quite thrilling. I think what's worrying me the most about this is, is, the, is the weather, is the environment. Um, the nature of these expeditions is harsh. You know, we're going to adverse places where there's a lot of things and a lot of factors out of your control. And that's part of the attraction. Um, but it's also a worry. You know, it's a worry that we don't actually know at this stage if it's possible to fly microlights in Antarctica because it's never been done. Uh, we don't know if the airframe is going to be able to function effectively in minus 50, minus 60. We don't know if we're going to be able to fly with disabilities in minus 50, minus 60 because there are additional complexities to doing this kind of task with an injury. Um, there's additional risks. Uh, there's an additional risk of frostbite. Uh, there's an additional risk of by not having the use of two arms, if something happens in the air that you need to react to quickly and efficiently, you've either got to develop a technique to do it with the use of one of two limbs, um, or you don't do it and things go wrong. Uh, so there's a lot of uh, there's a lot of potential issues there, which uh, creates an element of anxiety. But that's good. You know, there's nothing wrong with that. And and I think anybody that tells you that they ever go into an event of this nature without any anxiety or fears, lying. You know, you just got to learn to control it and then put measures in place to minimise the risk involved and, and therefore maximise your chance of success. I'm most looking forward to being part of a new team that's established from scratch, taking on an endeavour that hasn't been done before. Because with that comes a whole host of challenges that at this stage, we don't know what they are. And, and that's the beautiful thing about being part of something new. Yeah, you, you don't know what path it's going to go down. You don't know how it's going to evolve. Um, and that uncertainty is kind of warpedly and sickeningly to some what I get a buzz off. So it's, yeah, I'm, I think I'm, I'm most looking forward to being part of something new.